Continuing with our first app, we'll look at Style Values XML. As shown in the graphic on App Components, Style Values XML controls the overall look and feel of your display. So we'll come down here inside the Values folder and double click on Styles. Let's expand the window out a little bit to get a better view. And there are also two ways to look at styles, including the form method we looked at for strings. But we'll focus on raw styles XML. And the wizard has set up two style tags for us, one for the base theme and another for the app theme. The base theme, it's being called app base theme, as indicated by the text here, is using the Android theme light. And this base is replaced by more up-to-date themes if the mobile device is running on a newer Android version. These newer versions are defined by version-specific style files here, over on the left in our Package Explorer. So for example, we open up the values-v11 and open up this styles file. For phones running API 11 or higher, it's using the theme Holo Light. And if we open up the values v14 file for phones running API 14 and above, it's using the theme Holo Light with dark action bar. Now, this terminology can get a bit confusing, and we'll be studying themes in more detail in a future lesson. But fundamentally, what we're doing here is creating a hierarchy of themes that will change depending on the API level of the device running the app. Next, let's look at the menu layout. And from the graphic on app components, remember that the menu XML controls the contents of your menu display accessed from the action bar. And we have two ways of looking at the XML including the same options selection menu that we've looked at previously, and we'll be focusing on the raw XML. So to access the menu XML, we come over to the menu folder in the Package Explorer and double click on that file. And in this file, it's using the menu tag with a namespace established here. And we have one item in our menu for the settings. We have an ID attribute giving this item an ID, which is menu settings. And this can be used to reference this item from Java code. We'll look at this mechanism for cross-referencing between Java and XML in a future lesson. There's an ordering attribute, which is a bit meaningless since we currently have only one item, but the wizard nonetheless generated it. If there were other items and they had other ordering numbers, Android would put them in that order. The show as action attribute indicates when and how this item would appear as an action item in the action bar itself. In this case, it says never, so it would always appear in the drop down menu underneath the action bar. And the title attribute defines the text that will show in the menu, and it's the string defined by menu settings. Next, let's look at the manifest XML. And from our graphics on app components, the manifest XML controls application-wide attributes such as your app name. And we'll bring up the manifest XML, going back over here to the Package Explorer and double-clicking on that file. And here we have it. For the manifest XML, there are a number of ways to look at the contents. The manifest view, together with the application view, and the permissions, which nothing shows, instrumentation, nothing. Now, these tabs we'll look at in more detail on the lesson on the manifest. For now, let's just take a look at the XML itself. Starting at the top is an XML tag, and the manifest tag defines package level parameters, such as the package name and also a namespace is defined. And a version code, number one, and version name, 1.0. The version code is a number starting at one, and that's increased every time you issue a new version of your app on the Google Play Store. 
the version name is the text name you give that release, and the two don't have to match. You could use a second release name of 1.2 or 2.0 or any number you want. The version code has to be incremented uniformly, starting from 1 and going to 2, 3, 4, etc., because it's used by Android to notify users of your app when you've issued a new release and they need to update your app on their device. The Uses SDK tag defines your minimum and target SDK versions. Now notice the error message that's now showing up. I can't be sure if this will be showing on your app in Eclipse when Android detects some errors can vary. Now, let's see what it says. It says we're not targeting the latest version of Android. So the latest version is 17. So let's go ahead and just change this to 17. And you can change it on your code even if you don't have an error message. Change it to 17. We can click on the Save button. And you see the error has gone away. The next tag, Application, is for app-level attributes. The Allow Backup attribute indicates whether to allow the application to participate in the backup and restore infrastructure. Android's backup service allows you to copy application data to remote cloud storage in order to provide a restore point for application data and settings. In this case, it's set to True, allowing backups to take place. The icon attribute designates the PNG image to be used on the user screen as the launch image. The label attribute indicates the app name, and the theme attribute indicates the app theme. And now we see there's another error here, at least I do on my app. So let's check it out. So the error says, avoid hard coding the debug mode. Leaving it out allows debug and release builds to automatically assign one. Now the debuggable parameter or attribute tells Android that it should let us debug the app. Now remember, it was the Android wizard that generated this code. Now Android is telling us to consider not using that code. So what's up with that? I would say that it's one Android system developer not talking to another. It happens. It's a big system. This is only a cautionary error. We don't have to change this. But let's go ahead and let's delete that attribute and click on Save. And the error is gone. And let's move on to the Activity tag that specifies activity level attributes. The name attribute specifies the fully qualified name of the main activity. And the label attribute is again specifying the app name. Now we get into intents and intent filters. We'll be studying intents in a later lesson. For now, let's just say that an intent is one mechanism Android uses to make things happen on a mobile device. What this action tag is saying is that this activity is the main activity for the application so that Android knows to fire up this activity when the device user wants to start the app. The category tag is telling Android that this is the top level launcher activity. And now let's look at one of the PNG image files. As in the graphic on app components, PNG files contain images displayed on your app and user launch screen. So let's open one of those up. Let's go over to the XHDPI folder and double click on the PNG file. Now, when I click on a PNG file in my computer, it's opened in Adobe Fireworks, the program I've set as the default for PNG files. PNG files allow the background to show through areas of the image that aren't filled. And you can use any program capable of creating and editing PNG files. So that's the end of our somewhat long journey through your first app. I know I threw a lot of material at you. If you like, you can go back and review all or selected parts of this lesson again if there's anything that's not quite clear to you. And remember, we'll be revisiting much of this information in more depth in coming lessons. Hopefully having this first app under your belt will help put what's ahead into perspective and give you confidence you can master the Android system.